Look, you've got these dangerous boat crossings. These are putting lives at risk, but they're also undermining our border security. So we need action to tackle these dangerous boat crossings. The problem is that the Rwanda scheme is an extortionately expensive gimmick that is uh, not a serious plan to actually tackle the problem. Deportation flights to Rwanda are set to begin in as little as 10 weeks. This comes after a late night row between the government and Lords that led to the passing of the landmark Safety of Rwanda Bill. Rishi Sunak has vowed to get flights off the ground in weeks, staking his premiership on the policy, contradicting his long-standing promise that they would start this spring. The first flight will leave in 10 to 12 weeks. Now, of course, that is later than we wanted, but we have always been clear that processing will take time and if Labour peers had not spent weeks holding up the bill in the House of Lords to try to block these flights altogether, we would have begun this process weeks ago. But what actually is the Rwanda scheme and how many asylum seekers will go? The revival of the Rwanda policy will finally become law, which will mean people who enter the UK illegally will be sent to the landlocked country most of whom will be small boat migrants. Once they've landed, their asylum claims will be processed, but there is no route back to the UK, and Britain will essentially pay for migrants to start a new life in Rwanda. Enforced removals of rejected asylum seekers are down by 73% since 2010, and there's a long road ahead before the bill can be seen to have achieved its core aim of stopping the boats. <laughs> If we take into account the proposed capacity of the facility in Rwanda, 200 people, in real terms that amounts to just 0.7% of small boats that arrived into the UK in 2023. It's perhaps questionable then what the actual impact will be, but despite this, Rishi Sunak has declared the scheme to be a powerful deterrent. There are different schools of thought. My view is that it will, because I don't think that people will pay people smugglers large amounts of money to cross a very dangerous waterway to be told when they land in the United Kingdom that they're going to be staying there for a couple of days before they're flown out to a third country. Now, we've been talking about Rwanda, but three other countries have also expressed interest in joining this scheme. So it could be that uh, it wouldn't be Rwanda you go to, but another, another country. There is currently no limit on the number of asylum seekers who could be deported, but it would take more than three years to remove them all, even if the Home Office hits a high of 15,000 forced deportations a year, which was last seen in 2012. At the moment, we're looking at possibly removing as many as 2,000 people to Rwanda. Initially, it was as little as 300, but that number has now increased. And the, the, uh, the hope is that the numbers will be uh, further increased uh, as time goes by, up to about 5,000 a year. That will send uh, a very big message to the people that are uh, thinking about coming across the channel. Now, the government have also received uh, interest from three other countries other than Rwanda about joining the scheme. And of course, if that happens, then the numbers, the people that can be sent abroad will increase significantly. Um, that will make the scheme very, very effective. Then there is the question of just how safe is Rwanda for those people who have taken a dinghy to cross the English Channel. Rwanda is a safe country. The United Nations have actually housed over 135,000 uh, refugees uh, in Rwanda without any problems at all. And it is nonsense for charity groups and um, others to say that it's unsafe. They, they just don't want to send people overseas. So Rwanda is a safe country and it's a very prosperous country as well. I think it's the most prosperous 
country in Africa at the moment. So, what will the Rwanda plan cost? According to the National Audit Office, this figure could stretch to 370 million over five years at least. At the moment, it's costing about £100,000 every time we land somebody in the UK. And that is money that could be spent uh, elsewhere in the overseas aid budget. There is a myth that you could buy 200 new nurses with the money that we're spending in Rwanda. Well, we couldn't because the money for Rwanda actually is coming from the overseas aid budget. It's not coming from general taxation. And previous data suggested that it would cost the UK government £63,000 more to remove a migrant than to keep one. Refugees are welcome here. Opposers to the Rwanda bill have fiercely criticised the scheme, with many charities acting on behalf of the asylum seekers. It is perfectly appropriate for the Lords to, uh, to delay and to say uh, that we think the government should think again, even for the government to think again twice. Amnesty International UK called the legislation a stain on this country's moral reputation that takes a hatchet to international legal protections for some of the most vulnerable people in the world. The British government announced two years ago it was going to send people to Rwanda and has done nothing at all. So the people smugglers are telling the, um, the illegal migrants that they've got nothing to worry about and they can still come to the UK. The Home Office will counter this by making videos and films and what have you, putting out a lot of stuff on media, telling people that it is going to happen. And we've already seen this in Vietnam, where they have been working very closely with the Vietnamese government to try and stop Vietnamese migrants making this uh, perilous journey. So th that is what is... Um, likely to happen, it will act as a big deterrent because illegal migrants will not want to pay lots of money only to spend a few hours or even a few days in the United Kingdom.